All right, well at this point in the project, we need to stop for a minute and talk about what's going on because this project started out as a custom order fulfillment. I had a client uh, some time ago, this is an old order, reach out and wanted a Chinese cleaver style knife. And I don't know what the proper name for it is, but it looks like a cleaver, shaped like a cleaver pretty much. It's not a cleaver, it's a knife. It's for slicing and chopping and it can be used quite effectively by someone who is skilled with it. So you would use it in the same way that you would a, a large or medium sized chef's knife. And uh, I decided, to, since somebody, some other people had expressed interest in a similar, similar blade, I decided to uh, forge more than one and I set out to forge four of these blades. And that is more or less what you saw in the preceding footage here. Well, as you notice, one of them broke 
I got a little bit too aggressive on the post quench straightening. Now there's, you, you can work wonders with that. I have never worked with a blade quite this thin out of the quench and had a little stress point there. Just went a little too far. I've broken blades before doing this um, that are not quite this thin. And you just, there's a, there's a line you, you, you have to know where that is. And uh, also the thinner the blade is gonna cool off quicker post quench and you know probably you know move along that uh, that uh, steel phase conversion maybe a little bit faster so it's a there's those variables that uh, that affect the, the process so while post quench straightening is a normal part of my heat treat process some of the variables like the thinness of this forged blade change things a little bit so anyway I broke a blade well it kind of went downhill from there because not only did I break one of those blades trying to straighten it, after I got them all straightened and I got them straight and completed the heat treating process, I found that uh, our other blades had a, uh, a warp to them, a various different style of warp. And uh, with the exception of this one, the smallest, you know, smallest blade out of all of them. And basically what I ran up against here, and this has a few wobbles in it, but I think it'll come out with the grinding, we'll see. What I ran up against is, uh, essentially this is the thinnest blade that I have, blades that I've forged at a 50 to 100 steel before. And initially I was disappointed of course, but then I decided, you know what, this is a yet another learning experience. And uh, as much as you hate to have spent all that time on product you can't sell. It's not a complete waste because this is another thing that um, you add to your information, your, your experience. And so this is what's left of the first, of the, of the two that I broke. So I was able to uh, test some uh, spine tempering on them and do some, some testing with that. And uh, Learned a little bit about what I'm dealing with here. You know, I was able to look at the grain structure, which looks very good. And overall, I was able to learn that, uh, you know, this 52100 maintained a memory out of what we did in the forging process that I was not able to erase with the typical heat treat cycles that I do, which is normalizing, uh, process anneal, a thermal cycle and then quenching it or hardening and tempering and uh, that's something you're not necessarily going to notice in a thicker blade it's not really a problem unless you can't get your blade to, to be straight this uh, this blade right here was one that I worked with for quite a while trying to salvage and there's also a fair amount you can do in the grinding uh, step to to straighten things that are trying to bow up on you I just wasn't able to get it to work. <clears throat> the spine is quite straight. The edge is not. And so we have like a compound warp. It's not just bent this way. It's because it's straight this way. But once you get up to here, you've got different things going on. And so that edge is not straight. And I simply can't. <laughs> I can't sell this. This is not uh, simply not acceptable. So I've been using this blade as a bit of an edge test on a thin uh, heat treated uh, 52100 blade. It's got a nice little convex bevel at the edge there. And I've been chopping uh, uh, two by threes with it, or two by fours. I have both around here. I don't remember which one, but I've been through several times and uh, it's uh, performing beautifully. And I've been cutting other stuff too, just kind of enjoying a nice sharp blade with some good steel that happens to not be straight. And then uh, with the spine here, doing some experimenting with that for future projects. But this blade right here, pull my uh, calipers out here. Right, right at this point, it's uh, about 87 thousandths, 80 th or 79 thousandths, so a very slight distal taper, I suppose. You know, but, uh, and it's a forged finish, so it's, uh, Kind of varied. My goal was to make one of these blades in a forged finish. 
All right, so I still have to make this blade, still have to make this knife, but um, there's two routes I could go at this point. Well, there's really three, but practically speaking, there's two. Uh, the one that I'm not going to take is to spend an extra amount of time trying to figure out what kind of um, heat treat process would allow me to completely relax all of the memory from the forging, from the aggressive forging we did, as you saw, in these blades. And maybe that would be a full anneal, like a full traditional, like, you know, the old style anneal where you heat it up to, you know, critical temperature, as they say, austenizing temperature, and you put it in a, in your ashes or vermiculite or whatever. That doesn't set you up for a great, uh, a great uh, heat treat um, process pre-quenching, so I, I don't do that. That's not what I normally do. Um, if, if you had to do that in this case to get these blades completely relaxed to where they wouldn't warp back up on you in the quench um, That would be that would be a possibility the reason that I'm I know it's not warping from the quench per se is because I Don't quench all the way to ambient temperature and so you still have that time to, re to manipulate that blade which you saw me doing earlier. I don't like to get into whole, that whole technique. It's, it's very useful understanding how that whole, all works, but you quench your blade to a specific temperature, say about 800 degrees, you know, maybe six to 800 degrees, and then you don't leave it in the quench. You take it out and that steel is going to convert uh, at that point to martensite over the next period of time, but you have a window of opportunity there. So um, the, the warping that we're having here is due to the uh, steel retaining a memory with that aggressive forging that, that we did. And granted, um, you know, my, my methods to spread that steel out are not super maybe conducive to a, a uh, relaxed piece of steel. So I recognize all that. So I'm not going to delve into further uh, heat treating processes that could take care of that issue. My other two options are, at least not at this point, my other two options are to either leave it much thicker with a forged finish, or my third option is to forge it thicker and then grind it to the thickness I want, which will obviously uh, remove the forged finish. And that is the option that I'm gonna go for because as I said before, this is not a cleaver, it's a knife, and it needs to be able to slice and chop efficiently, just like a regular chef's knife, and so uh, I don't have the design option. I'm not going to make a thick chef's knife. It's not helpful. So on that note, I had to go ahead and order in some additional steel that's quarter inch by two inches wide. So instead of trying to spread out an inch and a half piece of stock all the way out to what we need, and getting it that thin by necessity and also by design previously we're going to use a bigger piece of stock we're going to leave it thicker and we're going to grind it and we're going to see how we do with that
so after forging review here, uh, overall that was a lot easier to get this kind of width and everything from this bigger stock as you would imagine. Last time it kind of felt like trying to get blood from a turnip or something like that. This one a lot easier in that regard. A couple things I did do differently on this in the forging is first of all, I did not try to do really a uh, forge in the bevel, which I did on the other ones. And so as thin as those spines were, I'd forge the, uh, the edge even thinner. And not really so on this, in this case, I just left them, you know, the same thickness uh, front to back, which is still pretty thin. Let me grab my calipers here, spine right here. So we're at 115 thousandths, so thicker than the last one. This is, you know, right around the same uh, thickness, but what I do have is a distal taper still. So the down towards the end here, that's, uh, you know, five or 10 thousandths thinner, depending on where exactly you measure it. But anyway, that helped with the overall straightening because when you have a, a bevel and it's thinner here and thicker here, and you try to use the flattening dies on your press or your hammer or whatever, you know, it's only going to contact the thick side. And so it's not very useful in straightening. I just left the bevel alone this time. It's still forged plenty thin. And I uh, <clears throat> was able to use the power hammer a little bit in straightening. Had some low forging heats. Came back and did that several times. I, I hope that's going to help a lot. Uh, I think it will. It's still a nice thin forged blade. But I'm going to go ahead and heat treat this, figure out how well this is working before I end up uh, forging any more. And I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is clean up the profile a lot here. We've got some material all the way around to remove and we'll normalize this thing and see how it goes. All right guys, well this has been a learning process and we spent some time talking about the different things that went on here. So hopefully it was helpful to you and you learned a little something and enjoyed this video. Got this all completed. I'm gonna show you some pictures of it in just a minute. Overall, pretty happy how it turned out. It's about 105 thousandths here in the Ricasso area and then about 95 thousandths down here. So a little bit of distal taper and I was able to leave some of the forge finish on there. So I'm pretty happy about that. Maybe a tiny bit thicker than what I'd originally envisioned, but I think it's gonna be very slicey and nice to use nonetheless. Nice gradual uh, grind to it and some, some good, uh, good stuff here. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. As always, don't forget you can support the channel simply by hitting the like button, subscribing, notifications bell, leave a comment. Appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video.